Thank you uh, for providing this uh, wonderful mini medical lecture educational series. I'm happy to be a part of this. Um, my name is Dr. Moses Goldberg. I live in Sonoma County. I work at the Integrative Medical Clinic of Santa Rosa up by the airport. And I um, have a family practice up there. So today, I um, just want to talk a little bit about wheat and what went wrong and what's going on with wheat and how that affects our bodies and our health. Um, so I'm going to do a few little slides to get into that. Um, one thing just to kind of kind of set the, the tone of kind of what the, the Institute is doing and kind of what you guys are being here and us as practitioners are is trying to get the holistic kind of broader outlook of life, what's going on. And a lot of that is really, you know, over the last 20, 30, 40 years, it's really changing the, the paradigms and the structures of breaking down the reductionism and, and the Cartesian philosophy of life, and that we're looking at a holistic picture that the sum is greater than the parts. And that's really a key thing, especially with health, because health, as we're finding more and more, is not just about one agent that causes a disease. It's not just a bacteria or a virus that causes a disease, but there's lots of factors besides just those things. There's um, Hormones, the immune system, stress, life, environment, genes, all that stuff plays a role in how that manifests in a person and their health. So we need to have that broader outlook, and it's moving that way, but again, most of the, the medical, political, economical system is all just about one plus one is, you know, is two, and so we need to get that broader perspective, and that's slowly happening. And because that's happening, then we're getting better results clinically um, in our health and our bodies. And hopefully as we get that outlook, like we talked about with some of the presentations with GMO foods and organic foods, that we're not just healing ourselves, but our communities, our state, our countries, the, the planet. So everyone has an opportunity to have those basic you, you know, human rights or life rights of clean air, clean water, and clean food. So I um, want to talk a little bit about wheat products. Okay, so um, so what is wheat? Wheat's a grain. It's from the Tritichium species. It originated in the Middle East and North Africa, and in the United States, it's the third most produced grain behind uh, corn and rice products. It's grown on more area of land than any other food, um, just the amount of space that it takes, and it's also a bleeding source of vegetable protein uh, for humans. Um, okay, so just looking at the the wheat as itself, uh, biochemically it has you know cellulose, lignans, calcium, phosphorus, lots of minerals, vitamins, magnesium, chromium, iron, potassium, the B vitamins, um, and so that's how we look at it biochemically. Naturopathically, as a food, uh, we find that it produces more of an acid environment in the body. In Chinese medicine, they find it to be more cooling, uh, sweet, and calming the shen, which is part of the, the constitution in Chinese medicine. In Ayurvedic medicine, it um, also has the sweet, cold, and has a heavy component in it, the dosha in its constitution. So we... Um, Wheat and wheat products, and we'll talk about gluten, um, has a lot of different uh, siblings, uh, spelt, durum, rye, uh, barley, and oats. Oats is actually a cousin, but it definitely has some of these gluten issues. So what is gluten? So gluten is a um, component of the grain, I'll have that in the next slide, but it, there's different categories of it uh, when you look at gluten. And one is the uh, gliadins, and they go through alpha, beta, gamma, 
and omega. And then there's the glutenine, which is how much the molecular weight. And normally in a digestion, a digestive system, in our small intestines, in colon appendix, we have this tissue transglutaminase, this TG2, which is like this enzyme, and that helps us break down gluten. And we also need that to, with good intestinal pH, um, it helps us break that down. And just kind of a little side note about pH, uh, the acid in our stomach. Um, Wendy was mentioning some of the, the drugs that are out there, and not only do they have a negative effect of taking out vitamins and minerals, but they also are obviously playing a role in the acid. So people that might have too much acid, so then they take the proton pump inhibitors and protonics, like Nexium and those meds to kind of raise the acid so persons don't have the reflux. And then the side effect of that is that then they're not really absorbing vitamins. And so specifically we think about vitamin B12, which is made in all of our stomachs, and we need to have a low acid to then biochemically kick off this thing called intrinsic factor, and then that makes your body's own B12. So when whatever that statistic was, it was 20 million people on those medications, on those every day for the rest of their lives, you can see how nutritional imbalances over time, the long picture, definitely start creating um, disease in people. Okay. So gluten is um, the one is the it's the proteins that are found in the endosperm of the, the wheat plant. And we talked about uh, people who have trouble digesting gluten as gluten intolerance. And so gluten also intolerance is also known as celiac disease, celiac sprue. Um, there's a genetic component as well when people have an autoimmune condition that makes it difficult to break those foods down. And we're gonna get into that. So celiac, just for linguistic size, it's a Greek word for the abdominal area, and sprue is a Dutch word for diarrhea, emaciation, malabsorption. So celiac sprue. And gluten sensitivity is regarded as principally a disease of the small intestine. And the so a little bit of science, and I got some pictures coming out, but basically individuals have a susceptibility to this gene, and it's basically this HLA, DQ2, and 8 that are made in our bodies, and that helps um, as part of the process. Um, uh, when we have trouble digesting this food, as I mentioned at the beginning, this TG2, this transglutaminase enzyme, when you have this genetic factor and this transglutaminase enzyme come together, they then make the body not recognize itself. And then T cells, which are part of your immune system, come and then start saying, who's this foreign substance? And then inflammation ensues. So um, what happens in gluten intolerance is that the body again lacks these particular digestive enzyme uh, intestinal glutaminase, which is another one that helps break those down. Antibodies are produced uh, as a result uh, of the gluten. Um, the villi, which we mentioned before, are part of this, these finger-like uh, parts of our intestines, become flattened, making them less able to, to get the nutrients from these products, from the, the foods and nutrients we're eating, and then irritation starts to happen. Uh, the bowels in a state of irritation becomes more permeable. We talked about the leaky gut issues, allowing larger proteins to come in instead of going from the digestive tract, and they go right into the bloodstream. And that creates another allergic reaction. And part of that allergic reaction is about inflammation. And then there's a variety of different inflammatory pathways that happen and release certain chemicals like histamine, and, uh, serotonin uh, parts, kinins, prostaglandins, and interleukins. Okay, so here's a little the graphics of healthy villi, where you have lots of absorption, lots of space, and then an inflammation happens and basically it's kind of like shaved off. And then here's a little picture, again, of the inflammation happens and then this leaky gut that is occurring, so the cells open up and it goes right straight into the bloodstream. And when it goes straight into the bloodstream, then your body says, what is that? It doesn't recognize it, and then more symptoms are starting to occur. Um, there was a great article about celiac and wheat in Scientific America 2009. You could just Google and the whole article's there. So 
do Scientific America, uh, gluten sensitivity, and there's a lot more uh, information about what's actually going on. They uh, also just another aspect of just more histology, more slides, but again, just think of these as like these nice coral reefs with lots of uh, very bio, re uh, full of nutrients, and then again, after having this inflammation process, basically taking that all away, so your body's not absorbing any of these things. So, um, the interesting thing about the double or triple whammy of gluten issues and wheat is that not only does it affect um, one of part of our immune system, which is our antibody response, um, it also helps, it affects our cell-mediated response. So those are two different parts of our immune systems. So our antibodies are some things that we create. Um, you might have heard of like I, immunoglobulin uh, E, immunoglobulin G, IgG, IgE, and then the third one, IgA. So these are all parts of the antibody response. So IgE um, is something we think about with acute reactions. So if you eat lobsters or crabs, you get that anaphylactic shock. That's an IgE, an acute, immediate response. Our body also has delayed immune responses, and that's the IgG and the IgA. That could be from 20 minutes to a few days where you have eaten a certain food, and then your body starts creating antibodies. So the antibody that are things that are part of our immune system. The food that we eat is the antigen, the foreign substance. And when those complexes come together, havoc ensues and we get lots of inflammation. So we think about uh, wheat and celiac issues as kind of um, common digestible, digestive issues. So we think about bloating, uh, when you have these undigested foods, bacteria thrive, uh, cramping, fatty stools, diarrhea, all those kind of things. But also, what we're finding is that it's not just the gut that actually affects many other parts of our bodies and our symptoms in our body. So from fatigue and headaches from eating these kind of wheat and gluten foods, uh, neuropathies, depressions, um, you think about with depression, you know, there's that idea about B12, which helps us uh, neurologically. If you're not making enough B12, then you might be more apt to become depressed. Um, bone health is definitely an effect, eczema, psoriasis. Um, I find a lot of uh, wonderful clinical results it doesn't, with people who have these kind of conditions with eczema and psoriasis, if they just start taking out the wheat products in their diet, it gets about 20, 25% better of the skin rashes that are happening. So that's a simple thing that people can do. Um, so again, lowering your immune response. Uh, one thing that we're finding about disease is that it's really besides looking at all the bacteria and viruses, but now we're having this broader outlook about decreasing inflammation. And that's been used now more recently in oncology and cancer treatments, uh, but even just going back to the basics of all these other types of health, let's lower our inflammation. And so we have to have that broader outlook and looking at health to start that process. So um, again, other types of common conditions with people who eat wheat and gluten, thyroid issues, hypothyroid, low thyroid function is happening. Um, a skin condition called dermatitis metaformis is specifically related to celiac and gluten when you get uh, itchy palm, hand, you know, itchy, uh, the phenar, the thumb, and this palm it starts getting really itchy when you start eating gluten foods. So there's a little skin condition. Um, arthritis is another huge thing when I see patients who have any kind of RA conditions stop eating wheat products and their symptoms definitely start to go down. So um, just recently, this past year, after what was it, two, almost 10 years it took the government to and all the politics behind it all, uh, finally came up with what is gluten free and it now products or companies that want to start making gluten-free products, it has to be under 20 parts per million. And then it can be labeled gluten-free, and that just came out a few months ago. So there is movement, and it finally happened. So how do you know if you have gluten <coughs> issues? I mean, one, you could do some testing, and there are um, blood, through blood tests, you look at these antibody responses, um, IgA and IgG responses to the, the protein and to this uh, enzyme, the transglutaminase enzyme. 
and there's more labs that are more, doing more specific testing as well. Uh, there's a lab called Cyrex Labs as well, uh, which helps uh, us figure some of these things out. And then you have standard tests, which is just eliminating, eliminating the foods. So I'm um, just curious, is anybody, how many people here are, or have done wheat-free diets or are doing? Wow. Excellent. Okay, so if you are mm -hmm. suffering with any types of inflammation, if you, that whole list of all those diseases, if you've never tried to do wheat-free, definitely give it a good month, and you should definitely be feeling a little bit better. It's not going to take away everything, because you, again, there's other causes to what's happening, but you'll definitely feel some benefit. Um, again, some of the nutrient deficiencies that people have, celiac, um, yeah, the, the B vitamins you want to replete. Um, it's really also important for them to people to get active forms of folic acid. So if you are taking folic acid or you're taking a multivitamin, make sure it has that 5-MTFR after that. So about 30% of the population have a gene defect where you can't convert folic acid. And that also leads to another kind of a box of different diseases called that uh, problems of methylation. And methylation is how you convert folic acid to B12. And that's been linked with Parkinson's and breast cancer and Alzheimer's and heart disease. So again, look at getting active forms of folic acid. Um, iron, carnitine, selenium, vitamin E. These are all things, again, from not having, from being susceptible to wheat. Um, things that help uh, people who have had these conditions definitely want to take some enzymes, digestive enzymes um, are helpful. Probiotics are excellent. Probiotics help increase another part of your antibody, that IgA, that lines your whole from the mouth out down the other side. Um, so get more troops, uh, so to speak, so get more of the antibodies. So taking lactobacillus, bifido is very helpful. And if someone's had this for a long time, you definitely want to think about doing glutamine, which is an amino acid, really simple, put in some water, has no taste, and that helps build healthy colon uh, cells. So it's a really e easy thing to do to help clean up the, the actual structure of damage that's going on. So um, a few books, if you're interested about uh, more about wheat, uh, one is called Breaking the Vicious Cycle uh, by Ellen Gottschall, uh, which is a great book for people who have Celiac, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, diverticulitis. So looking at that, um, there's a book called Wheat Bellies and Dangerous Greens. Um, also, this next, uh, coming up next week, um, Dr. Tim O'Brien, who is um, a doctor who's, his, his whole thing is about celiac. He actually came about a year and a half ago, spoke uh, up near Whole Foods. Um, and he's doing this whole webinar, so it's free. You can just go on, register to the glutensummit.com, and every day there's different doctors and nutrition people that are just speaking about wheat and what's happening in our bodies. So take a look at that. And um, Dr. Jeff Bland is one of my uh, heroes. Of uh, he's done a lot of work. He worked with Linus Pauling uh, back at the Oregon uh, Oregon State. Uh, and his work in vitamin C therapies, but he also has the Institute of Functional Medicine up in Washington, and just an amazing guy who's brought a lot of uh, functional medicine, the physiological problems that are happening in our health to doctors and to the public. So he wrote this in his book, Genetic Nutritioneering, that throughout your life, throughout your life, the most important and profound influences on your health, vitality and function, are not the doctors you visit or the drugs, surgery, or other therapies you have undertaken. The most profound influences are the cumulative effects of the decisions that you make every day in your life about your diet and your lifestyle. And that has that expression on your genes. So we all have the power, as we talked about every day, what we're gonna put into our mouths and the thoughts that we're having in our minds. Um, to take care of our health and be more proactive and put this out to our family and our loved ones. So thank you for the time and I look forward to your questions.